We have a special guest, uh, this gentleman. Uh, funny story, man. The way that I met him, I met him through Instagram. And uh, I have a podcast. It's called Unleash Your Power. And I was looking for, for, for people that I wanted to interview. And I had him on my Instagram, and I kept looking at his at his posts and the lifestyle that he had. And I'm like, man, I'm like, let me just reach out to him. I didn't know him whatsoever. I'm like, I'm just going to reach out to him. Worst case, he's probably going to say no. Cool. If not, if he says no, then he'll give me an opportunity for me to work even harder to get it. I made it in my mind that he was going to be on my podcast. Right. So that was, that, that, that was my desire, right. To have him on my podcast. So I reached out to him. Right away, he replied, his assistant replied, and, and he was like, yeah, let's do it. I was blown away. I'm like, all right, man. I'm like, get prepared. I, I, I got the pleasure of meeting him, his wife, credible, credible person, somebody that, that we get to learn from. And he has, he has an incredible story. Not only that, but he's put in the work. He's, he's, he's gotten the right mentors. And one of the biggest things that I got from him is he, he said, he's like, you must vet your mentors. Who are you learning from, right? If, if, if you're not vet, vetting your mentors, then you're probably going to get the wrong information if you're getting mentored by the wrong person, right? Because they're going to influence you in the wrong way. So it's very important who you're being influenced by and, 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 and who are you learning from. So like that, you could become a better version of yourself. So I'm very excited to have Mr. Hector Padilla. He's, he's an entrepreneur. He's, he's been in the real estate industry for a long time. He's an investor. Uh, he has over 90 million in his real estate portfolio and probably even more. Last time that we had a conversation, it was at 90. So you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Padilla. But uh, extremely grateful. Grateful for, for having you here, taking the time on a Wednesday morning. You could have been right now doing anything else, but you're right here with us. So I really appreciate your time. I appreciate everybody that's plugged in to be part of this call that says a lot about you guys that you guys are are eager to learn eager to get the right information so with that said mr padilla thank you thank you're you welcome for joining us. thank you uh thank you for having me on excellent all right so quick 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 background on myself so uh you know grew up middle class uh first generation mexican here in the u.s born and raised in uh, uh born in santa monica raised in in culver city and uh, I didn't go to any Ivy League school. I went to a public school system. I basically pretty much flunked kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. And they would just push me over because I was in a public school system. It wasn't that I was dumb. It was that I had attention deficit advantage. All right, so the teachers could not hold my attention. So I couldn't focus. So I wasn't uh, the best student. Um, Fast forward, I then, uh, my dream was to become a Santa Monica police officer because my uncle, which, which was my mentor, was a Santa Monica police officer. So I became a police officer, uh, did that, had a great experience. And then I decided, man, I can't see myself doing this for the rest of my life. Interesting enough, while I was on patrol, I would always see this guy in a white convertible Mercedes. And he just looked like he was living the life. And so I asked my partner, because he was friends with my partner, I said, man, what does that guy do? And he said, oh, he's a real estate investor. So I was like, man, look, it looks like that guy's living the life, right? So I went from uh, being a police officer, left that. I decided that I couldn't see myself doing that for 20 years. And then I got into real estate. Um, the big mistake I made when I got into real estate is I always tell you guys, or I tell my audience that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So if I was here and I wanted to become a mega millionaire by purchasing multi-million dollar properties, I should have just gone from here straight to there by, by working for a mentor, even if it would have been for free, but so that I can see what he's doing and how he's doing it. But because of two things, ignorance and lack of confidence, what I did was I went into something that was comfortable for myself. And that comfortable position was becoming an assistant to a residential broker. Okay. So I made the mistake that 95% of Americans make, which is what I call the reverse circle. So instead of going from point A to point B, right, what I did was I went in a reverse circle to being an assistant to a broker, to being a buyer's agent, to being a listing agent, uh, to doing fix and flips, to then raising private capital. And now that reverse circle, 15 years later, I'm finally where I want to be, which is purchasing multi-million dollar properties.
So whatever you guys are doing, make sure you don't fall victim to the reverse circle. If you're here and you want to get here, just go straight to there by getting the right mentor, being a part of like this group right here, you know, a, a mastermind group, um, working at the right company, the right team, etc. Whatever you want to do, someone is already doing it. So go learn from them on how they're doing it. So again, a former cop, a former realtor, now turned a mega millionaire by investing in multi-million dollar properties. Right now, my focus is properties from 2 million to 25 million. And um, the, the most important thing for me now is I'm 45, um, is just really having that financial freedom and that time freedom to be able to travel and not be under the gun anymore and having to do deals. So now we travel a lot, I've been to 22 countries and um, I'm finally living my dream lifestyle. And guys, uh, one last thing I'll say is the reason why you guys are on this call today is what I always tell everybody. It's that one word. It's only one word. And that one word is lifestyle. And lifestyle means what kind of car do you want to drive? What kind of home do you want to live in? What neighborhood do you want to live in? What kind of health care do you want for yourself, for your parents, and for your family? What kind of vacations do you want to take? My vacations are 40 to 45 days, and we take our traveling nanny with us, okay? So can you do that with, today, with uh, whatever you're doing today? Can you take off for 45 days and have an extraordinary vacation? All of that has to do with lifestyle. How, how did you have to work on that self-image? Because the person that was a cop, Hector that was a cop, could not be the Hector that's today. How did, uh, what, what were some steps that you took to work on your self-image, to work on your belief? You're big on one thing that I, that I got when I went to your office. You had a bunch of books stacked up in, in your desk, on the floor, all over. And I'm like, man, you read all these books and, and, and you pause me, you stop me here, like, I don't read books. You're like, I study books. Right, yeah. And that was, that, was, that, that was a big, like, wow, because I was that person. Oh, you read that book? Yeah, I read that book. What did you get from it? What, what actions did you take from that book? What, 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 what did you implement from it? And, and by you studying it, you get to get the, the meat from it, and you also get to implement it. So what are some strategies that you, that you use when you're studying a book? And what are some books that have support you in changing that belief, that self-image, changing that paradigm? and being a better version of yourself. So Jeffrey, before I answer that question, let me ask you, uh, how much time do, we, do I have on this call? So I wanna make sure I get everybody's questions. You have all the time that you want. There's no limit, huh? The, we, didn't, we didn't set a time, to be honest. So <laughs> if you guys need to log off, I, I, I completely understand this call will be recorded. So if you guys don't get an opportunity to hear everything, we'll share it with you guys. All right, so here, guys, here's what I'll say, look, Stop chasing all the shiny objects, okay? All, you know, this data system and, and doing this and doing that. There's very few things that you need to do to become ultra successful and live your dream lifestyle, okay? So like Jeffrey said, um, I don't just read a book. I study a book. I, I tab them. I label them. I journal them because I want to make sure that I'm learning the information enough so that I can implement it and I can teach it. Okay, so year to date, I've read over a thousand books. So imagine where your mindset would be if you didn't just speed read, but you actually studied, tabbed, underlined, and journaled a thousand books. Okay, so um, this is not rocket science. Keep business and keep life very simple. Part of that is everybody talks about your five to seven daily rituals. Okay, we all hear that, right? So what are your five to seven daily rituals? I always tell people, tell me what your daily rituals are, and I will tell you why you are where you are today, whether it's good or bad. And part of your daily rituals is journaling and reading every day. I still read and I still journal every day, and I listen to audio programs every day. I don't waste time. When I'm taking a shower, I'm listening to an audio program. When I'm getting ready, brushing my teeth, brushing my hair, I'm listening to an audio program. When I'm driving to my office, driving on an appointment, I'm listening to an audio program. Okay, when I'm working out, then I'll listen to some music to just pump me up a little bit. Okay, so what are your five to seven daily rituals? And yes, don't just speed read a book. You got to study the book so that you internalize the information, take some bullet points, implement it, and then teach it to somebody. I started implementing that, uh, Hector, and 
that have that has been the the big breakthrough in 2020 because I was all over the place. I I had a bunch of books, but I I, I wasn't I wasn't studying them. I wasn't reading them. I wasn't taking the time to to invest. Like man, you just talked about you read a thousand books. Not only read them, but you studied them. You labeled them. You're underlining them. You you took that information. You put it into work. You made mistakes. You you, you check because you there's one thing that you that you talk about uh, how to pivot and adjust. Can you talk on that? Because sometimes you have a goal and you're gonna encounter obstacle, right? You're gonna encounter a lot of stuff in the way and how can you how, how can you still stay on 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 track and at the same time be able to pivot to get there faster okay so here's the, the the number one skill okay and i've debated this with a lot of people but what's the number one skill that you must try because you're not going to do it but you must try to master what's the number one skill can you ask your audience that if they can hear me, if they can type it in. What is the number type one skill guys. you have to try, try to master because you're not going to do it, but what's the number one skill? Do we have any answers? Self-discipline, somebody said. Okay. Yeah. That's a good Focus. one. Focus. Focus. That's a good one too. Listening, desire, desire. All right. So here it is. Just so we Take don't. Take action. Have to All right. Ready? So the number one skill that you must try to master is self-talk it's self-talk mm. what do you do yourself in the morning when you're going to get out of bed are you going to say i'm going to get out and conquer the day or oh shit what am i going to do today at nighttime what are you telling yourself are you saying thank you god for all of my blessings thank you for my family being healthy or are you saying oh shit god please help me what's your self-talk is your self-talk um you know let me try and make a hundred thousand dollars this year or is it how can i make a million dollars a year how can I produce passive income so that I can live my dream lifestyle? So the number one skill is your self-talk. What are you telling yourself every day? The other part with that is you have to understand that the human brain is biological. This is one of my big lessons in life. The human brain is biological. What does that mean? You can't tell your hair to grow. You don't tell your, your heart to beat and not beat. Okay. You don't tell your nails to grow or not grow. It's just biological. It's just going to grow or not grow. So the thing with the human brain is that you can't control it 100%. We're not supposed to judge people, right? Everybody says, don't judge someone. We're not supposed to do it, but guess what? We all do it. I see someone and I'll make a judgment and a lot of the times I'm wrong, but that's part of the biological brain. Part of the biological brain is you're gonna have fear, but you gotta be able to conquer your fear and move forward, right? So you gotta have that powerful self-talk but you're not gonna be able to control your biological brain 100%. Yet be as positive, as realistic as you can be. Okay, so I had a chance, you guys have probably heard, uh, if you've ever heard me speak, I had a chance to go have breakfast with a billionaire. One of the big lessons that I had from him was, um, he said, Hector, you must take massive, skilled action with calibrated adjustments. That was from a billionaire. You must take massive, not some action. So don't go knock on five doors or don't send out five mailers. You have to launch your marketing and advertising campaign. Okay. Massive skills. You got to have some skilled, skilled action with calibrated adjustments. So if you're sending out a mailer or you're using a script or you're doing whatever you're doing to gain business and it's not working, that doesn't mean to stop prospecting. It means you have to recalibrate. You got to see what's working and what's not. Okay, so that was a, another big takeaway for me from a billionaire, taking massive skilled action with calibrated adjustments. The other big takeaway that I got from him, and again, you guys have all heard this, it's not rocket science, is having the right vetted mentor, someone who's doing what you want to do, not, not a, a scholar that's read books on how to build a business and you know, took this program and that program, but someone who actually has done it, right? So having the right vetted mentor and recruiting the right team. I have a solid team. I have attorneys, a CPA, uh, you know, uh, an, ac uh, an accountant, operations director, acquisitions agent, leasing agents, because there's a lot, 
there's a lot that I don't know. I know very little. Okay, so I focus 90% of my time on what I'm good at. And the, the rest of it, I delegate it. Here's something else the billionaire told me. He said, how do you compress time, time compression, right? So how is it that billionaires do so much and people that are making 50,000 a year do so little? And he said, because the, the asses, meaning the masses are focused on being, uh, being busy with activity. He said, focus on wealth building action. Focus on wealth building action not just time wasting activity. So he said, Hector, be a blessing. Be a blessing, time compression. How am I gonna be a blessing? By hiring a team, by providing jobs. Now I provide jobs, I'm being a blessing to those people because I'm giving them an excellent work environment. I'm in the apartment building business. I'm a blessing to my tenants because I provide nice, clean housing. So how can you be a blessing? And part of that is going to be to hire a team. And here's something else he said. He said, hey, if you don't have an assistant, guess what? You are an assistant. Because an assistant, especially an administrative assistant, it could be mi uh, minimum wage, right? Or maybe it's $15 an hour. But if you're doing those tasks that you can hire someone to do for 12 or 15 bucks an hour, guess how much you're earning per hour? 12 or $15 an hour. So if you don't have an assistant, congratulations, you are an assistant and your time is worth minimum wage. I like what you say. You, you're like, I know very little. I hire <laughs> my weakness pretty much, right? You hire your weakness and you spend 90% on your strength. So what is your strength? What do you consider your strength in, in, in your business, in, in, in your line of work right now? My, my strength is connecting with people and, uh, and deal making. That's my strength is looking at a property and figuring out how to creatively put it together, um, how to raise capital from individuals and how to get a seller to sell me a property. When I tell them right off the bat, I am not going to be the highest offer. If you are looking for the highest offer, it's not going to be me. What I do have to offer you is certainty and peace of mind that I will get this mm -hmm. transaction closed. You're going to pay no commissions. You're going to make no repairs and I'll close the transaction whenever you want, whether you want to close in 15 days or if you want to close in six months, I will work with you. Here's something else, guys. You, got, you have to know who is your ideal client, right? Who is your ideal client? So for me, my ideal client, they're 70, 85, 90 years of age. Why is that? Because they're the ones that own the five, 10, $15 million buildings. And guess what? They're not looking to buy the Ferrari. They don't want the Rolls Royce. They don't want the mansion. What do they want? They want peace of mind. They're done, man. They're in, they're in their fourth quarter of life. The last few pages of their book. So they want time freedom. They don't want to be dealing with tenants. One thing that they like about me when I meet with them is that I tell them right off the bat, I am not going to be the highest offer. If you're looking for the highest offer, I'm probably not going to be your choice. But again, what I have to offer you is certainty and peace of mind. And they like the fact that I'm being brutally honest with them. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm good at. I'm good at meeting with sellers, what I call belly to belly and um, building rapport with them and uh, persuading them. Okay. Being a persuasive communicator is a golden key to living your ideal lifestyle, being a persuasive communicator. There's a big difference between manipulating somebody and being a persuasive communicator. When you manipulate someone, you're getting them to do something that is not in their best interest. When you persuade somebody, you're getting them to do something that is in their best interest. So when I persuade a seller to work with me, I do believe that I am their best, uh, the best solution. Why? Because I'm not going to play games with them because I'm going to get the deal closed. I'm not going to come back and tell them to make all these repairs. So I'm very easy to work with. Harsha has, and yeah, by the way, guys, if you guys have questions, uh, put them on the, on the chat box and we'll get an opportunity to <clears throat> ask Hector. So Harsha is asking, what's the main belief in you that changed from before 
to the person that you are now, to now? The main belief, I would say, uh, so, so, here's something that has made a, 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 a big impact for me is I am at the best place that I have ever been in my life. Um, I'm 45 years old, again, did a thousand books. I've purchased over $98 million in real estate, traveled to 22 countries, made all of my parents' dreams come true. I, I married my dream woman. Um, I have a healthy little girl. So I'm like at the best place that I've ever been. And what's helped me with that is I've learned from the Stoics. The Stoics are the philosophers of 2000 to 2400 years ago. One in particular is Marcus Aurelius. Okay, Marcus Aurelius was one of the top five emperors of the Roman Empire. And he read, he wrote a Bible, not a Bible, I'm sorry. He wrote um, in a journal, he would journal. And now that became a book, but he wasn't writing a book. He was just journaling every night or who knows, every other night. So you're learning from somebody that was the most powerful person in the world. He was running the military. He was running the government. He had absolute control, the most powerful man in the world. So if you can read the diary, that's what I wanted to say. If you can read the diary of the most powerful man in the world, would you read it? Yes or yes. I hope you're saying yes, right? So that book is called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. It's his, it's his, um, his diary. So here's something, one of the lessons that I got from the Stoics. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see. So that's a coin. And I carry this coin in my pocket. And what it says right here, it has a hourglass, a skull, which is death, and then a rose, which is life. So it says, momento mori. Momento mori means remember you're going to die. You may be here for breakfast. You may not make it for lunch. You may be here for lunch. You may not get to have dinner. Okay. So I want to keep my life simple, joyful, peaceful. Um, and I just keep on reminding myself, I don't know when I'm going to die. I'm now 45 years of age. I hope to live to be a hundred, but who knows? So I got to make the best of every day. Every day I got to give uh, thanks for all of my blessings. Something else. This is another little coin that I have from the Stoics. And this one says, Amor fati. Amor fati means love your fate. Sometimes not getting what you want is the blessing. So with this whole COVID-19 thing, of course nobody likes it. But you know what? There were some things that I wanted, that I really wanted, and not getting them was a blessing. Right before this COVID hit, guess what I was going to do, Jeffrey? I was going to open up a restaurant. Okay? Oh, wow. And I was going to... Wow. I was going to put in $2 million to open up a restaurant. At the end of the day, it didn't work out. But guess what? That was the blessing. Because had I opened it, I'd be shut down right now. And who knows how much money I would have lost. Um, on another property, again, you know, love your fate. I was going to pull out $1.7 million in cash out refinance money. Because of COVID, I was only able to pull out like $700,000. But at the end of the day, that's fine because now I owe less money and my cash flow is actually higher, right? So love your fate. When something, when something you know, bad happens, how can you turn what I, what I call shit to sugar? How can you turn mm -hmm. dust to diamonds? How can you pivot and turn that negative into something positive? So that's what's helped me a yeah, lot I agree. is just learning from the Stoics. Um, earlier today, just, I just wrote down a quick, a quick bullet point. You said that you asked me to be on your, uh, on your uh, podcast. Guys, learn the power of asking. Be a pain in the ask, okay? Be a pain in the ask. There's a difference between being a pain in the ass and being a pain in the ask. Ask for what you want. Right now, my, my little girl is five. Okay, she's five years old. And what I'm teaching her is that when she'll ask me for something and I say no, it's not no and she's done. It's like, no, ask me again. Reapproach. Change your pitch. Say, Daddy, I understand you're saying no. What do we got to do to make it a yes? Okay? I'm not teaching her to just obey. I'm teaching her to ask questions. 
be a pain in the ask. Um, don't ever forget the power of asking. You meet one person, that person introduces you to another person. Next thing you know, you have a whole different uh, circle that you're, people that you're networking with. And one person, guys, one person can change your life forever. And not just your life, but your family's life. I want to touch back on what you said earlier, man, uh, because it, 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 it resonates with what you're saying right now, which is you got to be a blessing, right? You got to be a blessing. You got to play at a bigger game. So now you can give them an opportunity for a lawyer, for, an, for, for a landscape, for tenants, for who, whatever you want to do, you get to be that vehicle that is going to support and it's going to change family's trajectory. So you playing at a bigger game allows you to attract bigger and better things, right? And what you said right now, sometimes not getting what you want is a blessing because every day, and I, I agree with that. I, I always say, Everything comes with a lesson and a blessing. Whether, whether you like it or not, there's going to be lessons and there's, there's going to be blessings there. But it's your job, your duty to think and find where that blessing is at. You can't just get stuck in, oh, it always happens to me, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, you got to find a way that you could use that obstacle to, for you to become stronger and better so you could be able to contribute and support other people. So, here, so here's, powerful here's, stuff. Here's something else, Jeffrey, with that. Listen. Um, problems are never going to stop. We're always going to have problems, right? But here's what I always ask myself. Every time I have a, a so-called problem, most of the time it's a challenge. It's just a challenge. I ask myself, am I going to die? Probably not, right? Mm -hmm. um, what is the best case scenario? What is the worst case scenario? And realistically, what's going to happen? Okay. So again, am I going to die? No. Okay. Stay calm and start to think of solutions. What is the worst case scenario? What is the best case scenario? And realistically, what's going to happen? And when you have a problem, literally, everybody talks about writing things down, right? There's, the, there's some power in that. So write down the problem and then just start brainstorming really quickly. What are 20 solutions? And I guarantee you that if you write down 20 things, no matter how silly one of them may be, one of those 20 things is going to be your solution. You can also ask yourself, who else has had this problem? It's not the first time that this comes up. So go to that person and ask for help, right? Okay. I always tell people, you don't lack resources. You lack resourcefulness. Yeah. You don't lack resources. You lack resourcefulness. When Absolutely. I, when I got started in the business, uh, we don't have YouTube. We didn't have Google right? We didn't have access to all these audio programs and all these books on, a, on an iPad, right? We had to go to the library and do the research. We, we were using fax machines. We weren't even using email too much, okay? So you guys don't lack resources. You're lacking resourcefulness. The power of asking for help. Huge thing that you said right there that I, I, I want to make sure that you guys get it, which is in the quality of the questions that you're asking yourself. If you ask a shitty question, you're going to get a shitty answer. <laughs> but if you, if you start asking, what are 20 solutions? Wow, now you're not, your mind is going to come up with the answer sooner or later. If you get obsessed with finding out what are 20 solutions, you're going to find them. If you, if you start asking yourself, what are 20 ways that I'm going to do it bad? You're going to find them, right? You're going to find those. So it's in the quality of the questions and you being resourceful with today's technology, with reaching out, asking. If I would have never reached out to Hector, I probably would have never known him. But I took that, that leap of faith of asking, and it's been a blessing. Now we all get to contribute, and we all get to benefit from it. How powerful is that by you just asking and believing, having faith, and, and, and setting yourself in the right environment? You have that power of choosing, choosing who you're going to listen to and who you're going to attract. And part of that, guys, okay, look, I always, look, out of the thousand books I've read, and I've been in this business for 20 years, uh, going on 21 years now, but based on, and I've, I've invested over $250,000 in my mentors, um, and out of all of that, here's what I've learned. These are the five things. And you guys have, you, I, I gave this to Jeffrey last time, so you guys probably already heard them, but I would write them down again because you have to be reminded 
that in my opinion, these are the five things that are going to help you get whatever you want. So number one is your self-esteem. Number one is your self-esteem. How do you feel about yourself? You should feel good. Even if you're a little overweight, your, your ears are a little big, your nose is a little crooked, whatever it may be, okay? Feel good about yourself. No human is perfect. Just know that you are being, you are being the best human being that you can be and that you are doing your best, okay? That's self-esteem, how you feel about yourself. Number two is your self-confidence. When I'm up somewhere and I'm talking about real estate, my self-confidence is high because I know, like I know, like I know what I'm talking about. If you ask me to talk about rocket science, my self-confidence is going to be low, okay? So whatever business you're in, master it so that your self-confidence is way up here. You're not going to have any more fear. You're not going to have any doubt about somebody asking you a question or, or you know, you're not going to feel vulnerable. You're going to feel powerful. Number three is what is your business and life philosophy? So right now during this COVID time, here's what I would always tell myself. Everybody was freaking out. And here's what I told myself because I'm learning from the Stoics. I said, at times like this, we must remember that there have always been times like this. Okay? It is what it is. It will be what it will be. Then the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So what is your philosophy regarding business and life? For business, for me, it's real estate. I know that everybody needs a place to live, a place to play, a place to work, and a place to die. And those four things are real estate. That's my business philosophy. And I'm here to be a blessing. All right? So we got one, self-esteem, self-confidence, your business and life philosophy. Number four is what the billionaire told me, massive, skilled action with calibrated adjustments. Number five, having a vetted mentor and recruiting the right team and being a blessing to your team. That's time compression. So those are the five things, if you, if you read them, those are the five simple things that you're going to need to create your dream lifestyle, your dream business. Most of you guys are lost because there's three things that are really hard in life. Three things. One is steel, super hard. Diamonds are super hard. The third thing that is really, really, really hard is getting to know yourself. Getting to know yourself. Socrates would, so, would talk about know thyself. The philosophers always talk about know thyself, okay? A lot of you guys are struggling because you don't know yourself. You're not willing to sit down in, in, a, in a hotel room or in your bedroom alone for a weekend and just journal and think and reflect for one or two days, okay? When you're doing this, part of knowing yourself, ask yourself this, what are 10 things, 10 material things that you want? And write them down. What are 10 material things you want? You want the Rolls Royce? You want the, the house in the hills? What do you want? 10 material things. Then write down three to five things that you want to be. What do you want to be? You want to be a chef? You want to be a teacher? Do you want to be a mentor? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to be a leader? Three to five things you want to be in the next five years. Next, in the next 10 years, what are five to seven experiences that you want to have? For me, one of them was what I call a mini sabbatical, which was going on a long vacation of 40 or 45 days. Now we've done, I don't even know how many, we've done like five or six of them, okay? But that was a life experience that I wanted to have was just to take off for 40 or 45 days and not be stuck on my laptop and my phone and text messaging, uh, trying to take care of business here in the U.S., I set up my business so that it's kind of on autopilot, right? I got the right team in place. And then I took off and I worked very, very, very little. Okay. So what are five to seven life experiences that you want to have and write them down? Okay. Get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Keep business and life simple. 
All right, Jeff, any other questions? We have a couple, but man, I just want to touch on, on what you said, man. Getting to know yourself. That is where you have to go deep. You got to spend a lot of time invested in getting to know who you are, what makes you laugh, what makes you cry, what makes you angry, what gets you excited. How do you deal with stuff when, when they arise? Get to know. You're, you, you have to be in the journey of discovering who you are. Being in the journey of discovering the better version of yourself because it's trapped within you. So huge right there because that, that, that's one thing that we're learning and thinking into results right now is the power of you being vulnerable and having the guts and the courage to ask those questions and to see where your weaknesses are at, to see where your blind spots are at. So like that, you could find the right mentor that is going to support you in that area, whether it be in finances, whether it be in your health, finding the right people, whether it be in spiritual, with your relationship, anything. So you touched on a lot of things and there's, there's no coincidence. All this information is out there. It's just not enough people that are seeking to get that information and apply it and, and, and share it with other people. So we have a couple of questions right here that uh, before you, you, let, you leave us right now. So, so Fernando is asking, can you elaborate on your experience you had on getting to know yourself? It's, you know what it is? Here's something else, guys. Um, it's just being brutally honest with yourself, okay? So when I was a younger guy, I became a self-made millionaire at 29, a multimillionaire at 30. And so at that time in my life, it was all about me. It was all about me becoming a licensed broker, becoming a GRI, getting my bachelor's degree, becoming a millionaire, getting the Mercedes, the house. It was all about just me, 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 me. What happened was that once I got all that, is I got depressed. I got depressed because I was thinking, okay, so now I have all this, what's next? And luckily at the time, I've always had mentors and coaches. I had a coach and, um, and he had me listen to an audio program. And then I realized that the secret of living is giving. And most things in life don't matter. Whatever problem you have today, ask yourself, is this going to matter in 10 days? Is this going to matter in 10 months? Is this going to matter in 10 years? And for the most part, no, it's not. Okay? So don't be full of drama. Don't dramatize. It is what it is. It will be what it will be. Um, so in getting to know myself, then when I, when, I, uh, when I got married, I wanted to make all of my wife's dreams come true. I wanted to make all of my parents' dreams come true. I wanted to make, uh, I wanted to be a, I, I always say, I've been blessed. Now I'm being a blessing, right? So that was all getting to know myself is just keeping, uh, I'm not chasing stuff anymore. I'm not trying to impress anybody anymore. Um, I'm just living a very simple, uh, joyful and peaceful life. That's it. So just keeping it simple, keep life and business simple, learn from the Stoics. It's the, the reason why I keep on saying the Stoics is because it's time proven wisdom. It's not something, you know, something new. These are, it's time proven wisdom that has been proven for the last 2,400 years. Okay. Keep life and business simple. Don't dramatize. And something else to answer the question is I just did that exercise. I said, what are the material things I want? Okay. Uh, what experiences do I want to have and who do I want to be right now? The person that I, I don't really care about closing, uh, you know, 10 deals a year or 50 deals a year. I don't care about that. I care about time freedom, financial freedom. Um, I care about being the best father that I can be. I am a fully engaged father. I want to be the best husband that I can be. I've been married once and I only want to be married once. I don't want to get a divorce. My parents are elderly. I want to be the best son that I can be. My parents are 74. I don't know whether they're going to be here for another day or another year, or another 10 years, but I will tell you this, my time with them is limited, right? So I wanna be the best son, the best family man that I can be. I'm not chasing uh, shiny objects anymore. Um, I did that when I was in my 20s, even my 30s, but when I hit my 40s, it's just uh, it, everything turned around, but it was also because I accomplished a lot at an early age. Absolutely, uh, I, a quick question, you that, because I know that there's a lot of real estate investors right here. With this whole COVID, how have, how have you have to pivot and not be emotionally attached to the properties and the renters 
what are some things that, that you could recommend to them that, that you're implementing in your business? Okay, so really quick, what I did as soon as COVID hit, I started talking to what I call the grumpy old men. These are, uh, one of them is a billionaire. The other ones are mega millionaires with you know, a net worth of 100 million, 300 million. They're not motivational speakers. They're not on Instagram. They're just grumpy old men. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I started to talk with them on, hey man, what, what should I do? What are you guys doing? What do you think? And then I learned from them and then I got to make my own decisions, right? So I got to listen to what they're saying but then I have to make my own decisions because remember this guys, what's right for me may not be right for you. And what's right for you may not be right for me to each their own live your dream lifestyle. Okay. So once I learned from them, the first thing I did was I said, you know what? I got a slash overhead slash overhead. I talked with my team. I'm Hey, some of you guys are going to take a cut in your salaries, but I'm going to owe you the money. But right now we got to just cut overhead. We don't know how crazy this is going to be. We have to preserve capital. I talked to all of my uh, investors and my lenders and my hard money lenders. And I said, Hey, what can we do right now? Because we know this is hard times are coming. Um, I started ta being very proactive, talking to all of my tenants. So long story short, being very proactive. And um, before I was not doing section eight tenants because it's a little bit of a, uh, it's a lot of paperwork and I didn't think it was going to be good. But what I learned is that it's guaranteed money. Right. So I want guaranteed money from people that have a uh, working class job because they're always going to be able to find work. So I made the pivot and I started leasing out to Section 8, which has been great. Then again, I was a blessing. Um, we found a nonprofit organization for battered uh, mothers. So these are mothers that are single that have been battered and have kids. And it's very hard for them to be able to pay the rent. <clears throat> then hire a babysitter and then go work because at the, end, at the end of the day, whatever money they make, they got to pay it for childcare. So they're not making any money. So they're in a catch 22. So we found this nonprofit we're leasing to them. So now we, and they even told us like a lot of people, a lot of landlords won't lease to us because it's a nonprofit. So they're concerned about it, but this nonprofit guarantees the rent for two years and they fully furnish the apartment. So now I'm being a blessing to those mothers, right? Okay, so we made a pivot. You, you got you got to uh, shake and bake, make adjustments. The tenants that the tenants that could not pay rent, we talked to them. Hey, why can't you pay the rent? What can we do? Can you go on a payment plan? Most of them were actually honest. And um, right now, we only have we probably have about a five percent uh, default rate, which is not too high. Um, and there's a couple of roaches. Okay, but remember this, guys: a roach is a roach. I always tell people, when you try to uh, bathe a pig, you're wasting three things, time, water, and soap. Because at the end of the day, that pig is going to go lay in some shit again, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you got to know a pig is a pig, a snake is a snake, a roach is a roach, and there's nothing you can do about it. So for those tenants that are roaches, meaning they're just being devious, they got the money. They just don't want to pay the rent. They're taking advantage of a situation. I just let, the, let those go. And I just keep on moving forward, okay? I don't let them uh, get me down. Oh, man, some yeah. gold right there. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that because I'm sure that there's, there's some investors here that, that got value from that. Different perspective, right? Different things that you guys could implement in your business. But being proactive, right? Shake and bake. Shake and bake, baby. <laughs> it's, very hard. it's very hard to hit a moving target. Yeah. You guys are out there making offers, building relationships. And guys, here's something else. Um, you know, when you're out there building relationships, maybe that seller is not going to work with you, but because you're such a great person and you were so honest, they refer someone else to you. And that's how your business grows. It starts to snowball. You got to have integrity. You got to have good character. Be brutally honest with your clients. Earn the business. Become a blessing. Be the best you can be. Do the best you can do. What are some audibles, some books that, that, that you're currently listening that, that you recommend? And then, uh, yeah, you already share some of the core values. What do you stand for? Yeah, that. What, what, are, what are some stuff that you're currently reading, uh, listening to? Who, who, who's in your ear right now that, 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 so, we, go, you that know, we could learn from? So a lot of people always tell me, like, hey, what book should I read? And I always say, well, it depends because I don't know you. Um, I'll give an example of this real estate expert that I know. The guy's a CPA. He's an attorney. He's a broker. 
Um, he knows real estate very, very well, but guess what? He's broke. Why is he broke? He doesn't need to read a book about real estate. He needs to read a book about how to connect with people, how to connect because he's repulsive. That's why he doesn't do any deals because he comes across as I'm the CPA, I'm the attorney, the broker. I'm so uh, knowledgeable, but he's repulsive. So I wouldn't tell him to go read a real estate book. I would tell him, go read a spiritual book, become more humble. How can you become a blessing, right? Get to know yourself. Um, so he needs to read something else. So it depends on where you're at, what you want to learn. But here's what I will say for an excellent book on the Stoics. I highly recommend this book right here. Okay. Um, the daily Stoic and it's an X. This is probably one of the best books I've ever read. And I only read one page a day. I read one page a day and then I journal. I write a little message to my daughter because again, I don't know whether I'm going to be here tomorrow or not. So daddy is going to speak to her through this book. So I give her little lessons of what I'm going through in business and in life, what I'm going through uh, during COVID. Okay. So I read one page and then I journal a note to my little girl. And I always tell her, she always knows, Oh daddy, you're leaving me notes. Yes, what I am. So she knows what I'm doing every morning when I read this book. For uh, life and business principles, I recommend Ray Dalio. Okay, excellent book on business and um, some life principles. Um, so many, I mean, there's just so many books out there. Uh, here's what else is on my desk. Um, this is the one that uh, motivated me to do more um, sabbaticals. Okay. And the same thing, you just read two or three pages a day. This is not a book. It's pretty thick, right? You see how it's all tabbed up. This is not a book. You're going to read cover to cover in one sitting. You just read two, three pages a day. The other one by Tim Ferriss that I really like is tribe of mentors. And the same thing, it's a very thick book, but I just read two or three pages a day. Um, you know, the classics is, you know, think and grow rich is a classic. I would read that, go through it once a year. I'm looking on my desk and there's just so many great books. Um, if you need to be a little more humble and you need to slow down, I would go with uh, Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. Again, you see how that's tabbed? Okay. So this is a nice, easy, fun read, great book. Um, and again, some, you know, one of the best things that you guys can get when you guys meet with the mentor is ask them the same question. Hey, what are the best two books that you would recommend for me in spirituality, in business, in life, in whatever, right? Remember this, guys. Again, time-proven wisdom. Time-proven wisdom. Here it goes. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall open. Um, last little thing, because I'm looking at my, uh, my painting back here. So the, oh. reason why, the reason why I have that painting is because one of my things is I always tell my wife, we're not looking, we're looking for low hanging fruit. We're looking for cherry deals in real estate. We're looking for sexy deals. So my wife got me that to remind me that we're always looking for sexy deals and we're living a sexy lifestyle. All right. Oh uh, man. Love I, it. Yeah. My wife got me this. Me this. So she had a uh, artist custom make that. And that is basically Monopoly. That's all it is, is Monopoly. All we're doing is I started off with buying a single little house, uh, two houses, then I sold them together. I did a 1031, I leveled up. I got a fourplex. I repositioned value add, leveled up to 10 units. Next thing you know, it just snowballs and it gets bigger and bigger. All right, guys. Hey, listen, thank you so much for uh, having hey, me. Jeffrey. I appreciate it. Hector, you. I appreciate you taking the time. Man, I know that everybody got value. I got massive value. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to make sure that they all reach out to you on Instagram. Make sure that you guys connect with them. Appreciate all the time that and the wisdom that you blessed us with. Thank you so much, Hector. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. All right, guys. Have a good day. Take care. With that's it, guys. Have an incredible day, man. And uh, uh, if you guys are not part of the Thinking Into Results uh, group, we are going to start it next year again.